a the scout stopped short of saying the 46-game season was a failure because the Clarendon Blues can forget about missing out on automatic promotion if they see off Fulham at Wembley on Saturday. But ahead of the National Stadium encounter, Snodgrass admitted that finishing in the top two was always the aim and that they'll all are now playing catch-up. It's very rare you get a second chance to get to your final destination, he said. We fell short in the automatic places, we know that. Now everybody wants to be on the good end, the club have worked tirelessly behind the scenes to get the club back. There's no room for error. The winger is desperate for playoff joy and knows that good times could follow. But all thoughts of his own future have been put on hold until after this weekend. I signed here, and I can only speak for me, I never signed thinking of myself, I thought, I'm coming here to be part of the team, drive it forwards and try and get to the playoffs, I'd love it to be automatic, that's what was in my head, he said. I was mentally prepared for the playoffs, don't forget we were 18th when I joined. I remember looking at that and saying, we have to kick on, and we did. We played Brentford then went on a 7-8 game winning streak, it's been ups and down. It feels like I've had three seasons in one. With West Ham, then coming here then getting to the playoffs. We know it's going to be hard, but if you want results, you've got to beat the best. We have to beat Fulham who've been one of the best teams in the division. I'm talking about all season, even taking Wolves and Cardiff into account and they went up. Everybody watching Fulham would probably agree. You have to take your hat off to them, the team that just falls short doesn't always make it in the playoffs but they had a great win in the semi-finals. We're happy with ourselves but we know we have a very difficult game ahead. Snodgrass has a burning desire to succeed. Although he wasn't at his creative best in the semi-final win over Middlesbrough, he sacrificed getting on the ball and playing for a more dogged and determined defensive display. It was a difficult game against Boro, a real ride of emotions, he said. The fear of losing that drives you forwards. None of the lads want to lose. You saw that never say die attitude and we will need that again. Stan Collymore, the Premier League needs Aston Villa Why promotion is essential Steve Bruce has challenged his troops to take their wonderful promotion opportunity after admitting the recruitment budget will be even tighter if they fail. Villa spent just £2.5 million on transfers this season and raised around £18 million from summer sales. The manager also relied heavily on loan signings with Sam Johnston, Robert Snodgrass, Josh Anoma, Lewis Graben and Axel Tuansby all joining until the end of the season. Given the financial restrictions this term, Bruce said in the build-up to Saturday's playoff final with Fulham, that winning promotion would be as satisfying as any of his other four conquests. But he also explained that it would be even tougher for Villa to compete at the top end of the championship next term if it goes wrong at Wembley on Saturday. Asked if the financial squeeze would be tighter, Bruce replied, I would think so because we haven't got the parachute payment. But I haven't gone into the realms of that just yet. We don't want to, basically, but I would think so. If there wasn't a lot of money last year then I can't see it being any different next year, in fact it might be worse. Bruce added, it hasn't been easy with financial fair play. People need reminding of that because they think I've used a big checkbook here, which has not been the case. We've brought in loans and I think I spent £2.5 million in the summer and brought in almost £20 million. So it hasn't been easy. We've had to balance the books and try to get the club on and even keel financially too. 
don't get me wrong, there's still a long way to go in that respect, but that's been part of the remit too and I think it's important that everybody knows that. It hasn't been spending power, certainly in my 18 months. But we've shown that if you're shrewd enough with your loan players and with two or three frees we've brought in they have certainly helped us even better. The manager admits that this is Villa's time to do the business and agrees they will not have a better chance to seal the deal. It's a wonderful opportunity, but let's not forget it's not all about money. We talk a lot about money in football but it's a game of football. In the championship nobody would have given Cardiff a hope in hell at the start of the season and they have been fantastic. That's the beauty of the championship. So it's not all about money. We've seen umpteen times that you can spend a lot of money and get nowhere. It's about getting the right people and the right balance. Future of Lone Stars Aston Villa manager Steve Bruce says he will look to secure the squad's loanies on permanent deals if the Claret and Blues can seal promotion to the Premier League on Saturday. Bruce leads his Villa side to Wembley to take on Fulham in the lucrative championship playoff final for the chance to sit at English football's top table once more next season. Villa have been significantly aided by the group's borrowed players this term, clean sheet master Sam Johnston, assist King Robert Snodgrass and, latterly, Fox in the box Lewis Graben have all contributed to their fourth-placed finish. Young pair Axel Tuansby and Josh Anoma, tipped for big things at Manchester United and Tottenham respectively, have also gained valuable experience. So impressive and important have those performances been, Bruce, should he have a top flight budget to work within the summer transfer window, will plan to sign them up on a permanent basis, not that such business will be straightforward. Aston Villa offer contract to Newcastle United transfer target, reports it is going to be difficult with the lone players we have got, he conceded. It's fairly evident we are going to have go up to keep the lone players, otherwise it will be a struggle to hang on to them, either financially or whatever division we are in. It has taken a little bit of time to get the squad where we are. We have a nice mixture at the moment, obviously there are decisions to make on John Terry and Alan Hutton. There is still a bit of work to be done. I have to say we have the makings of a very decent squad. The five lone players add to that. The first thing we want to do is secure them. I would love to secure them all if we can. The loan signings have been instrumental in getting us this far. I can't thank them enough for what they've done. They've been terrific for us, our loan signings. Give me five, Steve Bruce explains what's driving him on to succeed at Aston Villa. Bruce also believes that many of the loanies would happily move to be six on long-term contracts because of how much they have enjoyed spending time with the promotion chasing club this term. It's evident that the squad morale on a collective noted has been high throughout the season, and that has translated onto the pitch. The one thing is if you are a footballer you want to play on a Saturday afternoon, the manager added. What better place to do it than here? There are all the hallmarks of a big club, with a big tradition, history and a big crowd. Who wouldn't want to play at Villa Park every week? There is something wrong with you if you don't enjoy playing here. Even someone like John Terry, with the success he has had. He has enjoyed it too. High five Steve Bruce admits personal pride has fired him up for Saturday's playoff final as he desperately craves a return to the Premier League. The Villa boss has played and managed for over 40 years with the majority of his time coming in the top flight. And ahead of the weekend's Wembley showpiece where Villa will look to get the better of Fulham to secure the final promotion spot, Bruce said, I've been in football for so long but the one thing you look to do is keep succeeding, he said. It's why we're in it.
It's why I've been in at over 900 games as a manager and over 900 as a player, which is a lot of Saturdays. It would be great to get this club back in the Premier League, where we want to be and where the club demands. But we've seen with many clubs that they don't find it easy when they drop into this division. So you try to be positive and my aim is to be in the big league. We're not there yet but I'll keep trying to take us there and achievement wise it will be up there with anything I've done, that's for sure. Bruce has managed at Blues, Wigan, Sunderland and Hull in the Premier League but believes the chance to manage a club like Villa is even more exciting. He certainly feels there is unfinished business in the top tier after walking out on Hull following promotion. If Villa are successful on Saturday, Bruce will break his own record of promotions out of the championship which currently stands at 4. Can I make it 5? Let's hope so, he said. The one thing about management is that you get better the longer you're in it. So I will use all my experience to help. But the important thing is for the players to go out and perform. I feel we have enough leaders who can handle the occasion, transfer talk Aston Villa have offered a contract to Cameroonian striker Stéphane Bioken according to reports in the French media. Bioken is out of contract at League One side Strasbourg and is reportedly attracting interest from several European clubs. Premier League sides Brighton, Newcastle United and Everton are all said to be keeping tabs on the 25-year-old striker, but French outlet RMC report Villa and Barnsley have now joined the chase. Bohoken scored nine times in 33 appearances for Strasbourg last season, including the goal which condemned Paris Saint-Germain to their first league defeat of the season in December. Italian side Udinese are keen to snap up Bohoken, who has also been watched regularly by La Liga sides Levante and Espanyol. Bohoken spent a short period playing in Scotland earlier in his career. The one-time Cameroon international played a handful of games on loan at St. Mirren from Nice. Villa's director of football Steve Round has deployed the club's scouts across Europe to identify bargains to snap up upon the club's return to the Premier League. If promotion back to the big time is secured against Fulham at Wembley on Saturday, Round will be given the green light to push ahead with deals. Prince William has spoken about Aston Villa at Wembley, and it will delight fans. We don't need clappers, unlike several of their championship rivals, Aston Villa have never felt the need to use clappers. Villains have been critical of the likes of Birmingham City and Fulham, who they'll meet in Saturday's championship playoff final at Wembley, for trying to enhance the atmosphere inside their stadiums by introducing clappers. Steve Bruce labeled Birmingham's decision to hand clappers to their supporters before October 2nd City Derby at St. Andrews as ridiculous after fans screwed them up and pelted Villa's players with them. Fulham have also attempted to improve the atmosphere at Craven Cottage by handing supporters clappers. Ahead of the final game of the campaign, Villa have heaped praise on their own supporters and appear to have taken a thinly veiled dig at some of their rivals. Villa's marketing manager Adam Lowe said, This season, the club has doubled down on its commitment to make the fans the heart of everything we do, and this effort has paid dividends. Throughout the year Villa Park has been in full voice, away support has been some of the best in the EFL and the results have shown on the pitch. We have never felt the need to artificially generate atmosphere with clappers and the like. We know that the Villa fans are more than capable of generating that noise. We just want to supplement that with exciting activations that improve fan experience and give a visual element to their support. The fans have responded incredibly well to everything we have done this year and helped carry the side to the biggest game of the season. 
we're fully planning on capitalizing on that amazing support at Wembley. Aston Villa set to snap up Sheffield Wednesday midfielder on a free, reports Royal Approval Aston Villa's bid to get Royal Approval ahead of their championship playoff final with Fulham looks like being successful. They have reached out to Clarendon Blue fanatic Prince William ahead of the Wembley showdown and he has confirmed he's hoping to be in attendance. The future king bumped into a young Villa fan on his latest royal appointment and gave his thoughts ahead of the club's date with destiny. He said, You're William? You're William and you're a Villa fan? You've made my day. Are you going to the playoffs? I'm going to try and watch them next weekend. I've been quite nervous watching some of the other games. Fulham are quite good though aren't they? It's been very nice to meet you William, you're the most important man here. Playoff tickets touts are cashing in on the playoff final with Wembley tickets selling for almost five times the normal price. Aston Villa meet Fulham at Wembley on Saturday evening in the so-called richest game in football. Villa's tickets have been selling at an incredible rate despite season ticket holders only permitted to purchase one. The Claritin Blues had already sold more than 20,000 within 48 hours of tickets going on sale on Wednesday, May 16, 5 p.m. Image, Twitter slash at Neil Davis 1080 closing parenthesis but some of those tickets appear to have fallen into the wrong hands with ticket websites such as Ticket Biss charging villains in excess of £600 for some seats. The most expensive ticket available to fans via Villa's ticketing service was the category £198 for an adult. That same ticket is being sold for £474.95 on Ticket Biss. During the brief period Birmingham Live spent analyzing prices on ticket bis, tickets were selling rapidly as desperate fans parted with huge sums of cash. The cheapest tickets on ticket bis are selling for £124.60 but they're in the East End, which is where the Fulham fans are housed. A huge concern for EFL Chiefs is that Villa fans, keen to be at Wembley, will end up sitting in the Fulham end. While Villa season ticket holders are only permitted to buy one ticket, Fulham allowed their regulars to purchase as many as five. We don't need clappers, Aston Villa issue call to arms to fans ahead of Fulham, Clash Bruce's selection dilemmas Wembley week is upon us and Steve Bruce is putting the finishing touches to his plan to conquer Fulham under the arch. Aston Villa will be backed by nearly 40,000 villains at Wembley with thousands more expected to make the journey to London to roar Bruce's troops to the Premier League. Bruce is something of a playoff specialist having secured promotion twice before via this route. The same can be said for his players, many of whom have multiple Wembley outings under their incredibly seasoned belts. Fulham, meanwhile, are complete novices. They haven't visited the National Stadium in 43 years and only two members of their predicted starting 11 have previous experience of playing at Wembley. Team News Villa's only concern, as things stand, surrounds Egypt international Ahmed El Mohamedi. The right back suffered a muscular injury late in the semi-final first leg win at Middlesbrough. Manchester United loan man Axel Tuansby is once again expected to miss out with a foot problem, while backup goalkeeper Jed Steer won't be available until next term. Give me five, Steve Bruce explains what's driving him on to succeed at Aston Villa Bruce's dilemmas the Villa boss provide a tactical masterclass to overcome Middlesbrough in the semi-finals. Glenn Whalen had excelled as Villa's holding midfielder in the final few weeks of the season, but Bruce decided to draft Mile Yedinak into his 11 to combat Boro's physicality. Within 15 minutes of the first leg Yedinak nodded home the header which proved to be decisive. However, Fulham are polar opposites of Varro. Visa Jokanovic's side have delivered the fewest crosses in the championship this term and attempted the least long passes. 
Fulham like to keep the ball on the deck and make their opponents run, something which isn't yet an act's strongest suit. The liveliest of Villa's three defensive-minded midfield players is Berker Bjarnason, but the Icelandic has rarely been trusted to anger the team in its biggest matches. Yet an or Whalen usually get the nod for the big occasion and you'd expect that to be the case again. Another dilemma Bruce is facing centers around injury doubt El Mohamedi. James Bree stepped in for the second leg against Boro and performed admirably. But history tells us Bruce will restore El Mohamedi to his starting 11 if the 30-year-old proves his fitness. Our predicted 11 The fact that people were touting Sessegnon to be a surprise inclusion in England's World Cup squad tells you all you need to know about the now 18-year-old's extraordinary season. Sessegnon, a left-back by trade, has scored 16 goals this season, playing in a more advanced position and is rated at £50 million. Alan Hutton performed a man-to-man -man job on Adama Traore in the semi-final but Villa aren't expected to put such emphasis on stopping Sessegnon. If it, El Mohamedi will be trusted to stop the marauding winger with a little help from Robert Snodgrass. Grealish vs Kearney Jack Grealish and Tom Kearney are the two creative outlets. The two are unlikely to directly come up against each other in midfield but the playmaker who has the bigger impact will probably be celebrating at the end. Grealish has been sensational for Villa this season and holds the keys to their Premier League dream. Kearney isn't as dynamic as Grealish but he is very much Fulham's pass master having completed more passes than any other player in the championship this term. Who is Ryan Sessegnon, the Fulham wonder boy out to wreck Aston Villa's Wembley Dream Chester vs Mitrovic containing Fulham's awkward striker Mitrovic is pivotal for Villa. Mitrovic has fired 12 goals in 17 matches since arriving at Craven Cottage from Newcastle United in January. Chester has enjoyed a wonderful season and collected the Supporters Player of the Year award for his efforts. Keeping Mitrovic quiet at Wembley will be his biggest test, but he's never let Villa down before. The managers fired up. Get about them, free travel grab and versus ODOI makeshift central defender Dennis ODOI is undoubtedly the weakness in Fulham's armory. Villa will feel as though they can take advantage of Odoi's tendency to take chances at the back and Graben's movement and spatial awareness, which is normally so clever, will be central to those plans.